<laughs> hey, Jason. Okay, wait. So before we go live, is there anything I need to know? Wait. Uh, wait. So wait, what? What is that about? No, it was, it was for it was for the girth and the vibration type. Right, okay. Well. Uh, mm, uh. Sorry, I don't know what I'm, I should have no, never went there. No, 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 no. Postseason BB19 show with Whistle Nut, who I keep calling Jason and probably should have asked him before if you want me to call Jason Whistle Nut, but we'll do that in a minute. Anyway, if you guys want to see any of our past shows back, they're all over at yourrealityrecaps.com slash BB19. Literally, all the other shows are there. If you wanted to know if we've interviewed anyone else, yes, we did. They're over there. I, arguably, you could say, save the best, Whistle Nut. Our last. Check them out over there. All of the single, uh, all of the shows, all of our posts, uh, our recaps, uh, our blogs, flashback times. If you want to go back and see something you missed, everything from this season, as well as all of the other shows that we're covering, are over on our website. Of course, we are currently uh, covering Survivor. Next week, we are starting Bravo. We are starting game night. We are starting a contest looking for new hosts. So that is going to be super exciting. And we're going to have a Kevin advice show, which so many people have been asking for, which I think will be hysterical. Uh, you guys watching this show back, uh, make sure you become a fan on you now so that you can watch us when we do them live, chat, hang out uh, in the chat room. Of course, the number one fan on every You Now show gets a prize. The number one fan of Jason is getting a signed Jason bandana, which is going to be amazing. Um, of course, lastly, if you guys want to help support our shows, consider becoming a patron. YourRealityRecaps.com slash patron. You get access to the patron-only shows, prize giveaways just for patrons, weekly shows just for patrons, and after shows uh, for patrons as well. Uh, or you can always do one time donation at YourRealityRecaps.com But look, everybody, we need to get to the man that you all want to hear from. It's Jason or Whistle. Now, what do you prefer, Jason? Hey, uh, you know what's fine? Jason's good. <laughs> I'm only whistle nut in the arena, so you can go with Jason. It's just right. Jason, you know what it is? I think because I'm from New York, I we don't do nicknames. We're like real names. Ah. I think well, that's the Jason it is. it is. It's settled. Jason it is. Jason it is. Although I must yeah. imagine that that's confusing for some big brother people because then we we have other Jason. So for that yeah. factor, I like calling you whistle nut. There you go. I mean, it's it's the same guy. You know what I'm saying? It's just an ego thing. It's an alter ego. Whistle nut, Jason did. So whistle nut it is. Yeah, I like it just as good. Okay, perfect. Now look, right before we start anything, I need to um, um, maybe apologize to you. Okay, um, go ahead. On behalf of myself and Karen uh, from Big Brother Canada, we may oh. have allegedly... Um, during the cast assessment show that we did together, said that we thought that maybe sort of you were a serial killer and um, <laughs> had people in a well on your farm. But I'm just saying, it's just comedic. <laughs> no, that's my neighbor. That's my neighbor. <laughs> that's your, that's your yeah, neighbor. That's all the neighbors around me just down the way. And they're the ones with people in their wells. So I, I can see how you get that confused. No, of course we do comedic recaps here. We were just having fun with it, but I thought it was hysterical. And then Jason, like, we all, like America, Jason, fell in love with you okay. in, like, Sweet. one week. It took us one oh. week to fall in love with you on that show. <laughs> and it took I, me, Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. It took me three weeks to try to uh, get my bearings before, I mean, I, I really wanted to self-evict, like, the first three weeks. So that's nice. I'm glad. I wish I could have known telepathically that... Everyone was falling in love with me in the first week because I, I, I was having a terrible time the first three weeks, I felt like. Did you really? You wanted to self-evict in the first three weeks? I don't feel like that came across at all to us. Good. Well, that means I was hiding it pretty good. That I, I, had, I felt like a total fish out of water. I didn't know what I was doing. I was so glad to have Alex. And I was just so glad to have all those house guests when I was in there because I was like, oh, my gosh, what have I done? I'm locked in this house, like legitimately locked in this house. But I mean, then 
then I just it started to be it started to be good. You know what I mean? I started to feel, you know, normal and uh, relaxed a little bit. But yeah, it felt like the first few weeks it was touch and go. So what was it? I mean, what was it those first few um, weeks? Then was it the missing your family? Because I mean, we know. Yeah. I don't. I don't think it's a surprise. You said it in your um, pre-jury interview, so I'm sure we're allowed to say it. You know, you weren't a fan of the show before. You didn't really know about this show. I don't yeah. really think you knew what you were getting into so much. Yeah, no, I really didn't. I had no idea the implications of those live feeds. You know what I mean? I mean, I knew we were getting recorded uh, audio and, and video 24-7. Like, I was like, fine. And, you know, it absolutely everywhere. 261 cameras. I got it. Uh, but I just, in my head, it was different. Like in my head, I felt like the clarity was like this right here. Mm -hmm. Like I felt like the live feeds were this people sitting, you know, in their, in their room, looking on a, at a blurry, uh, at a blurry picture. Like I just, I mean, I know that sounds ridiculous, but you know, I'm, you saved the best for last only because I couldn't figure out how to navigate the, the technology of social media to get to you the, the first time we tried it. So <laughs> I'm that telling you. I, it's it's okay look jason i think everybody appreciates you being here and hearing from you yes yeah, sometimes well. sometimes the internet connection is not the greatest yeah. in certain parts of the country i live um in new york and i don't get cell reception hardly anywhere like on my cell That's phone crazy. i get like no cell reception so i can't complain about people's internet quality um Ooh. people are just happy to hear from you jason and this show is all about me giving you as many of your fan questions as awesome. i can so let me let everybody let let me let everybody know quickly you're watching right now and you now spread the word square megaphone whatever it is now on you now <laughs> let everyone know that we are live and of course become a fan so that you are alerted every single time we go live and you can hang out in the chat we have a lot more shows coming up for big brother people as well we're going to be bringing couples on jason so we're going to have like oh. marlena on and raven and Sweet. matt on and mm -hmm. I insist, I realize I didn't ask you this before, I'm really not giving you an option to say no. Yes, no, I would never say no. Well, there's going to be a Whistle Nut and Alex show. Yeah! Because That'll I be insist right. on you two being together. I think you two together is comedic gold. I don't, yeah, she's awesome. I have never laughed out loud uh, during Big Brother shows, and I don't know how long, and there were many times <laughs> I laughed out loud over the interaction between you two and your ability to just ruin a plan, Jason. Just <laughs> take a plan and ruin it. Ruin it. What's yeah, up with still, that, Jason? Still clueless. Still clueless. I mean, I was clueless. Alex knew it. I said, look... Uh, I, I, I literally have, I have no idea what, what's going on in here. And I'm like, I feel like Alex, you are like super smart, got a lot of mental horsepower and you know, you kind of do the thinking and then I'll do the working and we'll, we'll have like a work and thinking relationship. And I, I think we'll go, we'll go a long ways. But if, if you got to leave the thinking up to me, uh, we're probably going to take a hot seat to the airplane real quick. Well <laughs> so. I'm going to see now I kind of disagree with you a little bit. And I'm going to take this question from a Juju Namaste. Um, and she says, Jason, I think it's amazing how intuitive you were this season. Do you think if you came back to Big Brother, you would trust your intuition more? Because you were a lot. You were right about a lot of stuff for Alex being the yeah. brains. You were right about a lot of stuff this season. Yeah, you know, I, because I, I honestly feel like I navigate very different social situations on a regular basis. I'm constantly navigating very different social situations just because of the rodeo clown thing and the auction thing. I mean, I never know what groups of people are going to be together at every venue that I go to. And so I feel like I have, I really do have a lot of experience in, in uh, just navigating situations really, really quickly and kind of understanding and feeling out the crowds. I don't know a lot about, um, you know, different 
parts of the world and you know that type of stuff but i feel like i actually am a i'm a, I'm a humanitarian you know what i mean i i believe in people from the from the get-go i mean i always have the best interest of everyone else in my i'll take i'll take the heat before i want somebody else to take the heat you know what i mean mm -hmm. like i actually want people to be happy and be relaxed and if i'm around i would rather take their their uh whatever pain just so they're having a good time i feel like that's my job when i'm in those venues and i feel like in there had i listened to my intuition uh i probably would have you know done well but i but i didn't trust myself enough because i don't i don't watch tv mm -hmm. i don't i don't interact with with any type of video games or or i don't have favorite tv shows i don't I don't know what current events are because I'm always in the dirt. You know what I mean? I'm right. always doing chores or driving. So I listen to the radio a lot, but mm -hmm. I'm nine times out of 10 change it. If it's, if it's not music. Right. So I thought I really felt like she, she just, I felt like she was really up on current events. She's got a lot of mental horsepower. Mm -hmm. I, you know what I mean? I just thought she was somebody that was uh, kind of worldly. And I, I just, so I wanted to trust her. I told her, I said, I'll, I'll only say my opinion. I'll run my opinion by you once. Uh, and if you don't feel it, I'll shut up because I don't want to screw nothing up, but I want you to know what I'm feeling, uh, when I feel something. And so that's, so yeah, I probably would, if I went back in there again, I would absolutely, uh, just use my own gut feelings and react to those. Right. I mean, I think that, I mean, I hate to say that you're a character, because obviously you are a person oh. in the game, but also right, yeah. they typecast different character traits. Yeah. And I think that is a great, like, you have great character. The fact that you are like that is what makes you endearing to people yeah. that watch the show, I I feel. Um, let me ask you this question from uh, Wesley Les uh, Lester quickly, since you're speaking of your real life. Wesley what Wester? Wesley Lester, yes. Oh, Dude. I was like, I thought Wesley Wester. I'm like, that's a cool rodeo. That's a cowboy name right there. All right. <laughs> well, I'm sure he would love that. Um, well, now, <laughs> what made you want to be a rodeo clown and auctioneer? Do you have any, or what are your next aspirations going forward now that you did Big Brother? That's like four questions, but I'm going to answer yeah. them all real quick. Go. I was, uh, <laughs> I was a rodeo, I mean, I was a rodeo bull rider for basically uh, Little Britches. So like junior high, it, I rode Little Britches Rodeo. Then I went to high school and I did all the high school stuff, you know, all the sports, all the speech classes, the the band, the choir, you know, the FBLA, the FFA, the FHA, <clears throat> the the 4-H. I did all those things. I didn't do the rodeo thing when I was in high school. Then I graduated high school. I went to college. I college rodeoed for Northwest Missouri State University as a bull rider. So I got to lift weights in the weight room with the national champs because the Bearcats were two-time national champions when, uh, my four years there. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was riding bulls. And then I graduated and I moved out and I was still riding bulls semi-professionally. And uh, I just – I was a tall, lanky bull rider. I mean I'm 6'4", and you, they just – you know, there's a there's there's kind of a, a stereotype for bull riders, and they're short and stocky. And the judges are – I felt like at the time I was, you know, in the in my 20s uh, that I I was just – I was way different than, than the norm. And so they didn't really know how to judge me because I got a long arm and I got long legs. So it doesn't take a big movement with my arm to reposition my hips, right? So if I was out of shape, I could just swing my arm a little bit and it would it – it was enough momentum to shift my hips back into place and then I could get back in center. So I felt like I was getting underscored a lot of the time and I felt like I was – I mean I was always placing and I was a good bull rider. But I was like I'm never going to be the world's champion mm -hmm. whether because I'm just – maybe I don't have that – I have great talent, but I don't have the, you know, the world's champion talent or I'm, right. or I'm just not getting scored right. Right. I didn't know how to be a showman enough to get the judges to, to make them feel like my ride was really as rank as it was. Mm -hmm. Right. So I quit riding bulls. I started training Oli and he was so awesome to me that I wanted to show him off. Like I, I'm like, this bull is exceptional. I'm telling you, he understands the human language. He's 2000 pounds. He's a bull. He's intact. He's a, he's, Double bread Wrangler rivets. I mean, he's he's got a motley head and he's got a big old hump. He's just he's got a crooked flat horn and, and I mean a, and a turned down banana horn. He's just rodeo looking. He is a rodeo bull. Like I said, he comes from the bloodlines. His daddy was a 
world champion buck and bull for four years in a row. And I'm like, this dude is, I retrained him. It took me three years, two and a half, three years, basically. And I had got him to where I could ride him, where people could scrub on him on and rub him and love him and hug him and sit on him and ride him. I could run the barrel pattern on him. Mm-hmm. And I really needed to, sh- I, w- I wanted to put him on a, on a stage to showcase his ability and his talent. Mm-hmm. And I was hauling him to the rodeos because I knew all the contractors because I rode bulls for 14, 15 years. Right. And they're like, look, man, we can't pay you to just bring your bull to the rodeo. You know what I mean? There's just not enough money to go around. They're like, but if you could be the clown or something, you know, where we, where we could get double our money, you know, where we're, where we're having a clown and then that would just add to it. And I thought, man, I spent a long time being a badass working on that reputation. And I'm like, I don't really want to change my, my badass bull rider, uh, disposition, Mm -hmm. you know, whatever stereotype that I had into the clown i'm like but they're like man you are a clown everybody wants to go where you are anyway everybody wants to know where you're going after the rodeo mm-hmm. everybody wants to hang around you before the rodeo they're like you were probably born to be the clown so i just kind of he's this this one contractor asked me he says you're going to be the clown this weekend they didn't show up and i'm like no way am i doing that he's like i'll give you i'll give you 400 bucks and i was like just this once you know i was like 400 bucks is i was like yeah i'll do it for 400 bucks and then it was it was like uh I was like a fish in water, man. It just, I felt like, dang, I probably should have been doing it the whole time. So that's how I transitioned um, into the rodeo clown. And as for the, as for the, the auctioneer and, and, and the other aspirations, mm-hmm. so I was, I always had a full-time job all I, my whole life since I was 12. I've had a job. I, I would mow yards. I would, I would scrape manure at the sale barn. You know, I would, I would buck bales. And, and then when I could drive, I, I did other things like I'd work in warehouses and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. The whole time I was rodeoing, I, I ran a feed mill and I mean, it was awesome. I really did love that job. But the thing is, is you're, I always felt like I was giving everybody else more than what I was getting. Mm-hmm. And I thought the only way to really pay yourself is to work for yourself. So I, when I, I still had my job and I was still training only and I was doing, you know, I was doing the rodeo thing. I always had a job. Mm-hmm. And when I got Oli, when I got Oli trained up and it was working and, and I was doing these rodeos for four and 500 bucks, 600 bucks a weekend, I, I went to auctioneer school because I've weld a lot of metal art. Like I'm, I'm really handy. I, I'm, I do, I build everything, uh, myself. I mean, me and my brother built houses. I mean, but I weld everything. My dad, my dad's a fabricator. I mean, you know, we're just handy with our hands. I, I grew up on a farm, so I'm, I'm really good with my hands. So I, I welded a lot of stuff all the time little trinkets and, and art. And so I went to auctioneer school, uh, and I thought if I could just weld up a bunch of metal art, Mm -hmm. uh, and then I could go to like a parking lot somewhere. Right. Mm -hmm. And I could just start oxygen and auctioning it off. Even just, just the people would gather around and I would sell it and I'd make myself some cash and that would work. So I was like, if that way, if my, if my rodeos were, if I was needing a little more money, I could have, I could be an auctioneer and I, and I always worked at a sale barn. So I like, I like the auctioneer anyway. Uh So that's what I did. So, and they worked out, they really complement each other because auctions you do in the spring and the fall and the rodeos you do in the summer and in the winter on the indoor arenas. So, I mean, I'm literally working year round in two different professions and they're both the same. They're both in front of people. They're both wildly exciting and, and they're both very, uh, intent right. on, on the patrons that are there. So, I mean, you really have to work the crowds on both of them and, and they have to make a connection with you. And I always felt like I had a good connection with people. Cause I really am. I mean, I really am a, a, like I said, I really do care about, about people as a whole. I'll always pick the safety of others, no matter what. I mean, I might run my mouth reckless, but I'll always pick the safety of others. So and for, for my aspirations from the auctioneer and the, and the rodeo clown thing, I'm always going to do those things. I just want to take them on to, to continually take them to the bigger, stages it's pretty hard to get bigger than the big brother stage though it it, well look here's what (laughs) here's what i'm gonna say uh jason one i think chat room found it fascinating to hear your clown backstory we kind of all just thought you always wanted to be a clown number one number two um i was impressed by the fact that i taught my dog to sit not anymore um and now (laughs) number three uh i want to move over to um a question from jenny who uh, jenny837 who wants to know 
did Josh's or how did Josh's goodbye message to you oh. change the game in your opinion? I mean, we all know how we think it changed the game, but in your opinion, how did it change the game for you? It was it was it was actually the it was the only insight that I had at all. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you once I once I left because um I I just I just knew that Jason, Paul, and Alex were going to the final three. You know what I mean? And I'm not, I'm not trying to discredit anybody else, mm-hmm. but I'm just saying in my mind, I was 100% certain that Jason, Paul, and Alex were going to go to the final three and it was just going to be a glorious comp battle and fun and the most wild final three ever because it was just going to be epic you know where it was just going to be a battle to the end we were going to be if it was a uh, an endurance comp we were going to be there for five six seven hours Mm -hmm. you know what i mean we were just going to really we were just going to just really compliment each other on on our on our mental horsepower and our physical strengths at the end it was just going to be awesome so when i got ejected i was i mean i was I still don't have any words for it. I mean, I was just totally devastated. Mm -hmm. Josh is good by message. I didn't even hear Paul's because Alex's was very, very, uh, generic. Right. Like I, I, it terrified me when I, when I heard hers, I was like, Oh my God, she, she totally, she totally dipped on me. She, she was like, Oh, sorry, Jason, if you're reading this, it was a total mistake and I didn't know nothing about it. Then that sucks. And I and I was like, oh my God. She she was behind it. Then Josh is like, uh, you know, it was Paul's plan, man, and he was balling and which he was always balling, but he's like, it was Josh's or it was Paul. Paul's plan. And I just went with it and you know, he's been orchestrating it and and then I just was infuriated. Uh and I and then when they played Paul's, I didn't, you know, I didn't hear it, but I re I heard it back in the jury house again where I could digest what he had said and he was and that that's really what that's really so, what sealed the deal for me. Because he lied to you about yes, because it was a lie with the goodbye message. Yeah, I mean, honestly, that's just too far, man. I mean, it's you you don't have anything but emotion and what people say to you inside the house. And I'm telling you, it's uh, it's really super tough to navigate. It's a wonder I didn't have a complete mental breakdown because I'm I'm a super physical person and and I'm constantly moving and I'm out in the fresh air and in the dirt and in the gravel all the time, and to be locked in that house for days on end, and 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 to ha- have to obsess and wonder and worry about what everyone's saying to you and not be able to prove mm-hmm. or disprove any of it. It's enough to drive you batshit crazy. I'm telling you, I, I was really struggling. If it wasn't for Kevin and Alex and and everybody else in the house that you could bounce stuff off of, and I'm telling you, it's very, very minimal things, you know, because nobody wants to talk about anything in there because they're all too afraid to say anything that might give you hints or clues to their background or to their strategies or anything. So everybody is very meticulous on on what topics you talk about so you don't really ever get to have an intellectual conversation with anybody all you really get to do in there is talk smack and and cuss right and i know that sounds it sounds terrible but that is that is the environment in there Mm -hmm. and so you don't have very much to re to relieve you of all of your mental anxiety and and your mental stresses and i really felt like if all you can go on is emotion Mm-hmm. inside the house then and i had i felt and paul's a super good listener and he's got a lot of mental horsepower and i mean and he's and he's hilarious you know what i mean and i i told him i i, I mean and i really was i i would have lost i would have been happy to lose you know to, to paul or alex at the time when i was in there i was like i you know if we make it to the final three i don't care who wins i'm just glad that we we you know we we did it right and it would have been he. I, w- I wish he would have had more respect for me to and understood that he could have just. I was on the block. There was nothing I could do after the veto was played. There's no. I mean, there's nothing he could have just said. Look, dude, hate me or love me, but I'm taking you out. And uh, it's just it's my game, and I want to win the five hundred thousand bucks. I'm telling you, I would have respected that. Now I know it's easier to say then, uh, easier to say now mm-hmm. than then. But but that. I just felt like what he did was he invited me to dinner, and I had a full schedule, and I couldn't go. And, and, uh, and I, and I, I changed my schedule to go. And then he asked me to invite my parents 
and they 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 were busy too. So I had them change their schedule, and then he asked me to invite my brothers and sisters and my best friends. And so 30 of us all changed our schedules to go out to dinner with him. And he said he would pay. I, w- I really want to see all y'all there. I'll buy your, t-. and then he just stood us all up. That's what I felt like. I'm like, you just took it too far. If you would have just stood me up at dinner, man, it would have been fine, but you didn't, you brought my whole family in on it. You know, that's, and I, so I did, I, it was so, it, like I said, I, I, I don't know if it's right or wrong, but the goodbye message is really what chapped my ass the most. Okay, so let me say this to you, number one. Truly, I do feel it's not right or wrong. A jury met, like, I don't blame people if they want to vote based on strategic gameplay and who played better yeah, best can't. or emotional. Like, I don't care how people vote. The game is to navigate the votes. That's the, the votes, game. The right. Um, but that being said, so just so we're clear, are so are yeah. you saying that if Paul would have owned it in his goodbye message, you might have voted for him? Like I would have voted for him. Oh, you would have definitely. Oh, okay, yeah, no, that, because I I was blindsided, one hundred percent blindsided. And I was so mad, dude. But I but you can't deny that you cannot deny the the way that guy. Put, I mean, come on, dude. Mm-hmm. He he's good. Yeah. He's good. Oh, you know what I mean? He. Yeah. But, you know, you also can't deny the fact that he's a vet. He was just there before. He knew the game. He understood, you know what I mean? He had a hell of an edge. But not only that, he gave me friendship, right? Yeah. There was eight bracelets that that guy got to give out. And and you feel indebted to him because yeah. you could have – I could have been Cameron. You know what I mean? You don't know what your fate is in the first night. And there's nothing scarier than the first night you think, oh, my God, I went through this grueling three-month process to get here. And, I mean, I could be going home tonight. Paul gives you friendship. You want to – you're indebted to him. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, he, the, the guy, and then, and then you, you know, then he, and then they put him on the block and he had a, the America voted for a pendant of safety. Yep. You really feel like he's the best asset you could possibly have. And that's the way I felt. I'm like, I got Alex and Paul. There's no way anybody's beating us. No right. way. So, you know, I mean, there's a lot of things that go into it. And I'm telling you, it's, it is, it is a mind warp in there. It's a mind warp. And, I I took a lot, a lot, a lot of positives out of it. Well, I really gonna, did. Like, all right, I'm going to stop you. We're going to talk about your positives because I am trying to get. A, I first of all, I love that you talk, Jason. <laughs> okay, sorry. I love, I, I, I love that you talk. <laughs> look, oh, look, I have all day. I'm trying to keep it to an hour for you. Um, if you okay. want to talk more, we can talk more. But um, we're we're <laughs> yeah, gonna I'll go. Sure. I know that we're gonna um ask you about things that you learned about it when we get a little bit further. But here's another question sure. that a lot of people are asking. I'm gonna take it from yeah. Lindsay. During the double eviction, it seemed like um your extreme attard was in the way a lot of you doing the competition, which hurt oh, yeah. you in a sense. Was it your choice to wear it? Like, did you have to wear it or did you, or could, you didn't have to wear it? You no, have, I had to wear it. Oh, you had I to didn't wear, it. Okay. wear it. I had to wear it. I did not want to wear it. And the dumb things kept getting stuck and then puzzles. But you know, if the truth were really to be told, mm-hmm. I, I, I was always a huge fan of Mark. Right. I mean, I really, I was and if I mean, there's a lot of things I I would do different, you know, if I had it to do over again. Not a lot, but but quite a few. And I I, I when I look back and I saw it was just me and Mark, yeah, my extreme guitar was totally getting in the way. And it was really like I wanted to like yell at production for making me wear that dumb thing mm-hmm. because they were getting in the way. But when I look back and I saw that it was me and Mark, uh, a little bit of me was okay because. I wanted Mark to have safety. I didn't want him to go home. Right. And 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 I and that was just like a, a kind of a good uh, sneaky way that that happened. It's so, not even necessarily sneaky. Uh, was not, it, that's Big Brother's strategy: knowing what to yeah. lose, what to win, when yeah. to let the other person take it, so that you can play next time. That's all. I think you are a perfect player to get to play again now that you know everything. Now that you know the game and know the way it works, I think it would be fascinating to watch you maneuver it a second go round where you know all the ins and outs. So, um, again, you have this from a ton of people. Uh, Would you play again? Look, I mean, I'm going to be, I'm going to be 39, I'm going to be 39 years old. I'm going to have two kids and I'm telling you, that's a long time. It's a long time to be away. Um, 
but you know, it's. I'm going to answer I... for you. 100% nobody's ever said no. Um, number two, <laughs> number two, Parawolf wants to know, would you ever consider doing Survivor? And... Absolutely, 100%. Oh, yes, you would do Survivor. Oh, my God, are you kidding me? I would crush that thing. I've never watched it, but I'm <laughs> but I'm telling but you, I'm going to start. I'm going to start watching because I know they're physical. Like I know that people almost die. That's where I live. I mean, I love to run right on that, that line. The, the, the wilder, the crazy, the more death defying, the better I navigate it. I'm, I, that's what I like. Okay, perfect. I'll let you know. Uh, your reality recaps dot com slash survivor. You're two episodes behind, but you can catch up with our recap shows, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> Done. You're two episodes behind. Um, or maybe three now. Uh, okay. And amazing race. Would you ever want to do amazing race? One hundred percent. Who would you want to race with? Um, I'm going to say this: if you couldn't race with your wife, and you could race with Alex, but you could Kevin. race. Kevin? Okay, perfect. Kevin. Yeah, Kevin, dude, that would be awesome. Okay, good. Oh, good. Let's get this out of the way right now. <laughs> Kevin. All right. Kevin, my man, my best friend. You're Kevin, your best friend. Just imagine that I'm yelling this at you horribly. Uh, obviously, we heard uh, the things that you said in the house about Kevin. Uh what do, and what do you want to say about it now, you know, looking back? Obviously, the whole thing about the wife and the kids is what we're specifically talking about for the moment. Um, what do you want to say about it? I, I'm going to just let you say what you want to say about it. It's, it's, uh, it really honestly pains me that, that it, it was, it happened, it went down the way it went down. Mm -hmm. But, but honestly, Anybody that knows me, and I know this is a cop out, but anybody that knows me knows that 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 is the most grotesque and outlandish thing in my eyes for anyone. And mm -hmm. I mean, I'm a huge, huge supporter of child and women's. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like the protection. I, I I'm telling you. But inside that house. And I don't want to. I don't want to play it off. You know what I mean. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to try to say that it, that I didn't say it because those words came out of my mouth. Now, where there was a lot of other words that came out of my mouth before and afterwards, mm -hmm. and they should never come out of anyone's mouth. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you're trying to navigate a situation where you have to go with what people are saying and what people want to hear, and they were trying to convince me that Kevin was lying to me, and and I was telling them that it was not true. And they were trying to convince me that the things that not, that nothing that Kevin had ever said were, were true and that what would be the, the craziest, worst thing that you could possibly do. And, you know, and I'm a wow factor kind of guy. Like I like people to go, Oh my God, you said that, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because they remember, they remember right. things. And now is that, yeah, it was that crossing the line and should I have never said that? Absolutely. And am I sick to my stomach about it? Yeah. You know why? Because I would never 100% ever say that mm -hmm. ever uh, in any type of normal situation. And and I'm not trying to justify it because they did come out of my mouth. But I love Kevin and his family and his kids and we've – all of us have talked about it, you know, and, and a thousand, thousand times, you know, I've apologized and I'm going to go there on um, – New Year's, mm -hmm. and I, I am. I'm, it almost um, it makes me sick to my stomach, honestly, that I that 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 happened. But at the same time, you also have to remember uh, that that the reason that was probably exposed was because somebody that wanted somebody else to win. They're compiling anything they can, the the, the dumbest things that people can say, and they're trying to get them exposed so so people will come down on you, so their favorite player will win, and right. And then me and Kevin were buddies and they, they you know, for, just to try to, it's a shame is what it is. And I'm terribly sorry I will, that. I'll, I'll say this about it. Um, and, and I'm just going to use this for a moment as an example yeah. when um, it comes to Cody for me. Because a lot of people keep saying, when are you having Cody on? When are you having Cody on? I'm not having Cody on because Cody said a lot of horrible, racist, homophobic things in the house. But you know what? And you know what Cody did when he came out? He said, I don't care. That's me. Get over it if you have a problem with it. 
where, oppo- where opposed to you who come out and say, that's horrible, I apologize, I feel sorry. Oh. And I have so much um, respect for that and players that can do that. And I think a lot of people do. And it, again, it goes back to your character and that's the kind of person you are. Obviously, your intention was not to hurt Kevin or Kevin's family. We right, all and make the thing, mistakes. Yeah, and the thing is, is that stuff is so far out of my comprehension Mm-hmm. That's saying it, it's almost like it's like a billion dollars to me. Like I can't even I can't even fathom a billion dollars. That stuff is so grotesque to me. You know, like the R word and and mm-hmm. and and child crimes. Those things are so absolutely disgusting to me that they don't even fit. You know what I mean? I don't even understand the implications of of the words because if I ever in a ever knew or had that had Anything like that come across me as a person, it would end right there. If I ever, if like something, uh, you know, you know what I'm saying? I just can't even, I can't even put words behind it because it's not, it's totally out of character for me. I was saying something to try to get the wow factor. Right. Right. And I wasn't thinking about the people I was saying it about or, or actually what I was saying. I just know that that right. is something people go <gasps> when you say it. Right. Exactly. And that, that was it. That was it. And so. But in the heat of the moment at two in the morning when you're – when people are yelling at you trying to convince you and you know it's bullshit but you just want them to shut up about it and get over it, you just say stuff. And then you're like, all right, haha, over the line. And that's what I said. I was like, over the line? You know, right. uh, you know I was – I would never do that. That's joking. But I just wanted the wow factor and everybody, yeah, of course they cut that stuff out. Well, doesn't perfect. make it right. It doesn't. Yeah, but- and I think you have apologized for it and I think people appreciate it. So I want to move on from it because I want to get to more right to more of your uh, fan questions. And honestly, I like yeah. that. I said that was going to be your hardest question. Technically not true. This is going <laughs> to be your hardest question. It's going to be harder than oh. that. So are you ready? I'm you ready. Do you to brace yourself? It's from Christine B. Um, okay. And Christine B wants to know, how is it possible you always slept through Alex painting uh, your nails and toes? You know, I, that's a good question. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's a good question, and I'm gonna I'm gonna tell a little secret. I I slept with earplugs. You're not supposed to have earplugs in the house, mm-hmm. so nobody knew that I had earplugs. And I'm and I I put earplugs in. I put that mask on, and I I would I would go to sleep. I'm a super sound sleeper. Like I always tell everybody, my wife is the one that keeps the gun in the house. If there's an intruder, mm-hmm. she's gonna be the one to shoot him because I won't wake up. <laughs> Mm-hmm. You know, because I'm nine zero all day long, ninety or nothing. I just all day. Mm-hmm. When I go to bed, I'm asleep, right? Right. Uh, that's just the way I sleep. I'm a real sound sleeper. And Alex is like a cat, dude. She, I mean, I actually watched her paint one of my toenails, that, you know, to try to figure out how she did that without me knowing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I couldn't feel it when I was staring at her. Like I was like staring at her, watching her paint my toenail. And I could not feel it. So I'm like, well, I get how that happened. Now, my hands, I mean, they're like. That's, that's they're harder. Like boot, they're like boot leather, you know what I mean? But 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 I don't know how she, I must have, I do sleep with my hands on my chest. And that must have been what was happening. I really don't know. But when I found that, that I somebody was paying. <laughs> she got a nice cold uh, ice bath uh, on her when I found that out. Right. Um, okay, I want to talk about another huge, I think, one of your best moments, although I don't want to put words in your mouth, but, uh, oh, goodness, um, somebody asked, I think it was SinSin198, what was your uh, proudest moment in the Big Brother house? So I'll go, I'll start there. What was your proudest moment in the Big Brother house? Birth uh, or the, the the pregnancy of my of my second child, hands down, no question. That was bitching. Right. So that's what I was gonna say. What was it like um, having that moment, kind of forever, basically as part of this show? I mean, there are not a lot of people uh, in Big Brother history, I don't think, that have gotten such news during the show, and uh, when it's usually good news. Yeah, that I think is going to be something that a lot of people remember uh, going forward about Big Brother is you finding out about that. Yeah, I'm telling you, I'm a. I was really. I I love my I love my son, and I want to have you know two, three, four more kids. 
Um, and so I, we'd been trying for like six months and then, you know, and I started the casting process and I knew that it was going to be like 102 days. And I'm like, man, if, if we don't get pregnant before I leave, that's going to really, you know, postpone it. And, and we were not, we were just, weren't, we were not. And I mean, I love the practice. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm a huge, huge fan of that. Mm -hmm. And even up to the second that we left, but I was, we were having negative negative uh, uh tests and i was like oh my gosh no no baby no pregnancy and so it was really weighing on me and bothering me because i was letting too much time get by so when i got that i'm telling you mm -hmm. it was nothing like i've ever felt in my life especially from where i was and i was dying in there mentally <laughs> we love we loved again seeing you seeing you get to have that moment we we usually don't get to see the hoh baskets from uh double evictions because and I guess they they were dying to get that scene out. So I was like, <laughs> yeah. oh, yeah, let's do that one. Um, okay, let me ask you this question from Sal Wall, because a lot of people did ask it as well. What was your favorite story or moment from your yard walks with Kevin? If you could pick one of your favorite <laughs> stories or one of your favorite moments from your yard walks, what would it be? You know, there is a ton of them. I, <clears throat> I freaking love Kevin. Mm -hmm. And you cannot deny the comedic, the comedic level that that guy delivers stuff. It's mm -hmm. hilarious. And there's so many, but I'm going to go with, um, it was right towards the end when they, when they were starting to, to, to play some of the older songs in the morning and he was jumping around. I guess that really wasn't a story, but he was telling me about the music that he listens to and, and like, you know, how his songs make him feel. And he was hopping around out there, uh, bouncing around like a damn rabbit singing the songs and doing the, the fake airplane mm -hmm. and i i was literally dying I, I was so i was so happy that he was so happy because we were both being berated at that week so much um like people trying and he was just taking fire after fire they were trying to convince me to back off of him and we were both like what the hell are we doing and i hadn't seen him that happy in a while and so i was super stoked about that uh, and as for just a straight story, my second favorite one was probably the when we were talking about the bleaching. <laughs> oh, with anal bleaching. Yeah. I, 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 I might have heard of it. <laughs> oh, my God. It is the, the Botox injections. <laughs> he won't say it. Kev, Kevin oh, won't know. say it, by the way. He was on this show and I like had a gif of it. And like he like turned red and was like, I won't say that word anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I was like Kevin but I'm telling yeah. you I, I agree with you Kevin is hysterical it's why I'm oh. go next uh, starting in like uh, a week we're gonna have a fan call and show where people can leave relationship questions for Kevin and then I have him <laughs> and then I have him answer them live on this show it's going to be amazing <laughs> oh my god I, that's gonna be I can't wait. You're going to have to set up a podcast in his house just so he can sit there because he you'll have 45 hours of footage because that guy oh, can I'm go. On it. Oh, we're working <laughs> on it. Um, uh, a lot of people asking this too. I'm going to take it from Vegas Baby, although I would be surprised if you answer. I would be surprised if you didn't answer how we all think you're going to answer. But Vegas Baby 40 wants to know, what was Holly's overall take on your gameplay? Um, I think, <clears throat> I think Holly had a, 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 she, she had, she knew that I had no clue what I was getting into. I mean, <laughs> right. she's like, you're not going to like this. You're not going to do well. They're locking you up inside a house with people that you're probably going to hate because mm -hmm. they're probably going to be entitled crybabies. And she's like, because that's what you hate that they're going to make sure they have some of those. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no man, it's going to be awesome. We'll be fine. And I, you know, I think she was, she's proud of me for making it as far as I did. And I think she gives Alex a lot of credit. Uh, and she, and she should give Alex a lot of credit because I really, I, I had a lot of Holly's got a lot of similarities to Alex in their terms of her grit and her iron, you know, uh, that's my, my wife's just a lot taller is all, mm -hmm. <laughs> but we all loved her. Like I will tell you right now, we only, I believe got to see two 
um, real life segments this whole season or, or two families, which was yours and Josh's, I believe. And we all loved Holly. Like we fell in love with oh. it. It took us like two seconds to fall in love with her. I was like, get her on the show. I replace yeah. anybody else. I don't even care. I will swap <laughs> out anyone for a Holly on this season right now. <laughs> yeah. Dude, there, there's not there's none tougher. There's none cooler than her by far. And there's really none that are more sexy. Mm-hmm. I mean, she's a, she really does have it all. And I mean, and, and I, I know that when people are like, Man, you married up, I'm like, yeah. But I mean, I, in my defense, I used to be quite a bit of a badass back in my 20s. I'm a little older now. But mm-hmm. <laughs> no, there's none. There are literally none better than Holly. All right. She is. She's a 20 on a 1 to 10. I love it. it that's very sweet. I love hearing that. Uh, Lost and Concruised has a very interesting question. I can't wait to hear what you're going to say to this. She says, um, Jason, in this scenario, what would you do? So... Who would you evict? Who would you align? And who would you go to final two with? So who are you going to evict? Who are you going to align with? And who are you going to final two with? Okay, you ready for your three people? Yeah. Cameron, Dominique, and Raven. Evict Raven. Align with Dominique. And what was the other one? Cameron. Oh, go to final two with. Ooh, align with Cameron and go to final two with Dominique. <laughs> okay, there you go. I like that scenario. I like that scenario. Um, Bruno's Dumb wants to know, uh, is there anybody that you uh, don't see yourself staying in contact with now that the game is over? Or, like, is the door open for everybody now that the game is over? Or are there people that you're like, eh, I don't want a relationship with you now that the game's over? You're gonna have to forgive me. I, I was trying to think it, uh, the, the the scenario in my head about the last question. I didn't even hear what you said. <laughs> Sorry, I, J- Jason. As long as you're cool with the fact that half the time that you're answering a question, I'm trying to get the next question and not listening to a lot of what you say either. <laughs> okay. Not ma- not many people Fair. know that, but you know, I'm just one Fair. person. Um. Yeah. No. Okay. So. Uh. Okay. Ready? Is yeah. there anyone that you don't? want uh, not that you don't want to but is there anyone that you don't see yourself keeping a relationship with post season or is the door uh, open for everyone i mean the door if i run into them uh, absolutely but i mean i i never did just ha- i just never had a connection with maven at all i just really never had one uh i i kind of sit try but they didn't really have one with me either i don't think you know what i mean we we're just for some reason, we just that us three just kind of never really connected. Mm-hmm. Not uh, really in a negative way. Just we just never did connect. Right. Uh, Jew boy, Jason. What? Um. What was? Oh, if you could switch for any other costumes. So like, if if you could switch out the extreme attard for like the frog costume, or you could switch out the extreme attard for the hot dog, uh, Alex's hot dog thing. Are you sticking with extreme attard? I'm sticking with extreme attard. That, that hot dog backpack weighed like 50 pounds. Right. Oh, that's right. You did have a frog costume. Um, yeah, yeah I, I don't think that that was a, a good one. And that was from bat. Bates. I'm going to say that question was from Bates. Um, will you, Someday Sunny wants to know, will you watch upcoming seasons of BB now that you've played the game? Oh, really? <laughs> well, that was the answer. <laughs> you don't have to say anything else. That was your answer. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm always real, 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 real busy in the, in the summer. I'm always traveling and rodeoing, so I don't really have a lot of time. But I can get it on my phone. So probably when I'm laying in my trailer, uh, if I, you know, and I'm Got some broken ribs or something. Absolutely, I'll watch it. What about January? Is January a busy month? We have... Oh, God. Uh, uh, let me rephrase that. Uh, what about this winter when there's going to be celebrity uh, Big Brother? I'm not fixed that one. <laughs> um, and there's going to be a celebrity Big Brother. Are you uh, going to watch that? Or would you watch Celebrity oh, Big Brother if it happens in the okay. winter? You know why I'm going to watch it? Because I... I've been in there, and there's no way them celebrities are going to hack what we have to hack in there. They're, they better change the the diaphragm. Is that the right word? The of the show. Well, because... they could change a diaphragm, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they have to switch it up. Go ahead. 
there's just no way, man. I mean, them people are used to getting what they want mm-hmm. when they want it. And I'm like, you don't get anything. You're a nobody once you hit the inside of them walls, man. You have to figure it out on your own. And I just think that is either going to be a total train wreck, which everybody likes to watch a train wreck, or it's just going to be like a bunch of people self-evicting. Bing, 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 and then there's going to be nobody left. <laughs> it's going to be absolutely insane. Well, let me just say this really quickly. We are almost out of time on this show. We only have enough time for a few more quick questions. Um, so I want to remind everyone, obviously, make sure that you become a fan now before you guys leave. So you're alerted when we go live uh, every time, of course. Like I say, show with Kevin coming up, couples shows. And the number one fan currently uh, is... Is Leslie uh, in the running for the signed autographed uh, bandana from you, Whistlenut? So that is exciting. You, yes. got, you guys got about like five more minutes left on that. So let me just try and quit. All right, Jason, we're going to be quick with these. Yeah. All right, you ready? We're going to okay, be quick, quick with your answer. That's yeah, like a rap, rapid fire, rapid fire questions. Go. Okay. Uh, BB Watcher wants to know, what were your thoughts when you broke poor Christmas's foot? Oh my God. It was insanity. I was, I was guilt ridden. I feel like I wrecked her life. I took something from her that she got, she paid, she used her body to, to make her living. And I took that from her. She'll never get it back. It was terrible. I was terrified. And I thought I was going to pay her doctor bills. And I knew I was going to get evicted for doing it because I broke her. It was terrible. I was devastated. But really Christmas, we get it. I mean, how much, how much longer are you going to go on about your broken foot? Uh, <laughs> totally. The arthritis funny. thing really got me. Oh my! I know. Um, uh, Violet UCB wants to know if Alex, Kevin, and Paul weren't there, is there uh, who would you have aligned with? Mark and Elena. Really? Okay. Interesting. Probably. Go ahead. Probably. Probably Cody. I don't. I mean, I don't know. Okay. Uh, interesting. Um. Uh, but uh, Sherry Blackberry wants to know, uh, is saying, Jason, has Oli forgiven you for, li- uh, f- uh, Oli, 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 sorry, for um, oh, yeah. Yeah, leaving you uh, for the summer? On a side note, I hope to see you both in mid-Missouri soon. Yeah, yeah, you'll probably see us in Missouri. Uh, he hasn't, I mean, he has forgiven me, but boy, it took, it took about three weeks because... Now, I mean, every morning I walk him out and, and tether him out in the yard and rub on him and stuff, and, and he's just now starting to come around. But, boy, when I got back, I didn't bring him any cookies or any wafers, and he come a-running when I whistled. And when I was when he put his head up and I didn't have any treats or anything, he just booked it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's, yeah, so I felt bad. But no, he's over it now. We're pals again. Favorite scare from Alex this season, uh, Sal Wall wants to know, was the favorite? The bathroom. Scare? The bathroom. the bathroom. I I I think a little bit of me died that that evening. I <laughs> something chunk of my heart. I don't know. It scared me. Okay, I love it. Now, here's what we like to do here. I like to give you um full screen so that you can kind of be one on one with your fans, and you can kind of have a minute. You can take as long as you want to say uh whatever it is that you want to say to your fans to the people that support you. However, Greek Diva would like to know if to start that off, you could do it using your auctioneer skills. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know how you would do that, but I'm going to give you full screen and it is your time to say whatever you want to say to your fans. Here you go. All right. So on, on on an auction note, Sold to everybody that sold on Whistlenut. Please stay tuned with the social medias and in tune with the social medias, the Twitter, the Instagram, the Facebook, you know, uh, the Wagner Den auctions on Facebook, the Whistlenut Noli on Facebook, the Whistlenut Noli on Instagram, the Whistlenut Noli on Twitter. I, I'm telling you, I'm trying. I'm getting into understanding and being able to navigate the different sites to where I can go live. And I mean, my phone is definitely equipped with all that stuff and I'm, I'm trying to, to, you know, to, to give 
to give more. Uh, and when I get more comfortable and, and I understand it and navigate it better, it'll happen. And I'm also, but at the same time, I, I really appreciate the patience that everybody's got with me because I, I've been gone a long time. And if my wife and, and family were running the businesses and my auction partners were running those and I needed, I have to give back and I have to give them my undivided attention because they've been, you know, they've been really busting it the whole time I was gone. And I don't want them to think that it, that I wasn't grateful for them by by dipping while I'm here. You know what I mean? They, they deserve my undivided attention, and that's what I've been doing, and that's why I, I've been trying to succeed. I don't want to miss the the BB, you know, uh, shock waves here. I want to ride some of those shock waves because it's very imperative for my both my careers. I mean, I'm I'm an audience type feast or famine thing where you know if I don't have auctions or rodeos i don't have income so book an auction you know tell the committees to book me for the rodeos and uh and follow along and and i I, i'm telling you i love questions and the most outlandish questions you know the most the craziest things you know like that thing that that cold water challenge and it goes around me i'm not afraid to do any of that stuff i'm i'm a huge fan of the fun and a huge fan of the morale and and i don't mind sharing my opinion so, uh, and I'm always, I've always got one, that's for sure. So, I mean, I feel like I'm, I'm very open to everything. So don't be afraid to, to message it or, or ask it or get in touch or book an auction or, or say you want to see Whistlenut at a rodeo. I say you want to see Whistlenut only at, at a party or a wedding. Hire us. We love it. All right. So then let me ask you this now, uh, or maybe you might not know a lot of them, but I promise we'll put it below. Let's start with Twitter. If people want to get in touch with you to ask you questions about Big Brother, to book you for places, um, I see on Twitter, it's uh, Whistlenut underscore Ole on Twitter. But is that where you prefer people to follow you? I don't, <laughs> I don't know. You know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> I, I What's your email, I Jason? So. <clears throat> um, pro- email is probably the one that is, it's, it's, um, Whistlenut and Ole at gmail.com. Okay. So the, all, all spelled out A N D. So Whistlenut, W H I S T L E A N D O L E at gmail.com. Whistlenut and Ole at gmail.com. Uh, but I mean, I like the Twitter because I know that there's a little envelope up in the right hand corner. And when I hit that, mm-hmm. I know those messages are coming. I just found that out uh, oh, yesterday. <laughs> I, because there was a bunch of them in there, and one of them was from Bobby Moynihan, and I was like, "Oh man!" So, and it'd been in there for a while, right? And I, but they're like, "Hit the butt, hit that envelope, you tool!" And I'm like, "Sorry, but I didn't." <laughs> so yeah, I, well, I'm wor- I like Twitter. Well, all right, I'm gonna put the links to your social media then below okay. this video on the edited awesome. one, and I just have to say, I, I think I know what you're gonna be reading to us on the patron show next. Um, so, <laughs> so I'm kidding. You don't have to. Um, all right, everybody. <laughs> all right, everybody. Follow Whistlenut on social media. We're gonna have to Thanks. help him uh, figure out to get like a social media manager. Who wants to? Who lives? Well, maybe you don't want to do that. Who wants to be his social media manager? <laughs> Someone needs okay. to help him out. Send him an email. Follow. I, I've, got, go ahead. I've just, I've got a good lady and a good dude that do it. I just Clearly. haven't been able to, <laughs> to get, you know, to have them explain it to me personally, oh, yeah. <laughs> but they're, wor- they're working on it. They're working on it. <clears throat> well, TikTok, Jason, uh, BB TikTok. celebrity, big brother is starting soon. <laughs> And then, you know, <laughs> and then, uh, oh, yeah. Uh-oh. Oh. Um, oh, I'm sorry. What about a PO box? A lot of people are saying we'd love to send you cards, Christmas cards, stuff like that. Awesome. Do you, do you have a PO box? Uh, I'll set one up pronto. Okay. So he will set it up. I'm sure he will tweet it out or he will have someone tweet yeah. out. I will retweet <laughs> it when it happens. I will add it below this video when it happens. Congratulations. Leslie be number one fan. Leslie! Way to go, um, Leslie, for being number one fan. Everyone else, thank you so much for tuning into this show, all the shows. Again, uh, we have a lot more Big Brother stuff and our regular content all next week, same time as normal, 7 p.m. Eastern, right here on You Now. So uh, make sure you guys become fans so you're alerted when we go live. Patrons, Jason and I will be there in um, like two or three minutes. And uh, thank you so much for watching, Jason. Thank you for taking time out. Out of your day to be here Thanks and talk me. to your fans. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Bye, guys. Uh, we'll see you guys all later. Bye. Bye for now. Yeah!